Hey, what's going on? In this video, I am trying to do my own highlights myself at home. So first things first, you guys are probably like, are you crazy? And the answer is kind of a little bit. But the real reason why I decided to do this was because I don't know if you guys know, but I'm based in Toronto and we are locked down again again like full-blown provincial lockdown nothing is open so i definitely can't get my hair done and it's already been like two months since i've done it and we're probably going to be in this for another two months and i was already starting to get like a pretty annoying root and i was just like there's no way i'm waiting another eight weeks to have like half of my head be dark and then the other half be blonde that's what i did the other times that we were locked down i was like well i'll just wait it out who cares but you know what when my hair is not done i really just don't feel good i like having fresh health healthy, bright hair. And I was just starting to get really like kind of down. And I was like, I'm just going to try this because, you know, if it doesn't work out, big deal. I, when we're back up and running again, I can go back to my hairstylist and like, hopefully she can help me fix it a little bit. At least in the meantime, while I'm at home, I can feel like I still sort of have some life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just because everything else is closed. We can't exercise. We can't do anything. It's still freezing outside. Canada's really cold. So I just kind of wanted to do this for myself because I was just sick of waiting and I wasn't willing willing to have this like huge annoying root anymore. So that's why. Great news is I did it for under $40. So in the clips coming up, I showed you guys all the products that I used, all of like the major bleaching stuff that you need for your hair. I, I did it for under $40. So that was a great benefit because it was obviously very cost efficient. I will tell you, I have bleached my roots before because I used to just be platinum blonde all over. So it was easy for me to kind of just go in because you don't really have to do much. Like you just like do it the same everywhere and then, you know, whatever. But um, I had never highlighted my hair before, but you know what? My channel is all about trying new things and having new experiences and so i was like you know what let's just do it so watch me highlight my hair for the first time by myself first i'll show you guys what you're going to need or what i'm going to be using gloves i have a toner i went with the wella t11 this time around because i want more of like a natural golden blonde i also have a 20 volume developer that's going to be used in conjunction with my bleach to lighten my hair this is the bleach that i have it's just like super basic i also have a bowl and a little paintbrush i have 10 volume developer to be used with the toner 10 by the way is like deposit only so i'm not going to be all neat and foiled like the they do at the salons but I do have a couple of foils to get some like pieces that I can't maneuver in another way. Just a brush that I don't really care about if like it gets ruined. A comb for like parting your hair and whatnot. Oh, a bunch of clips and stuff like that. You always need tons of those. Water because I'm just like so thirsty all the time. To start, I'm going to part my hair in fours just to make things easier to work with. Okay, now that my hair is all parted, I'm gonna start with the back sections because my hair is healthier here. So if the bleach stays on longer than it needs to, it's not gonna break off. Whereas if the front is so damaged, I don't wanna leave any bleach on for longer than I absolutely have to. So I'm gonna put my gloves on and just mix up my chemicals. So that's one scoop of the bleach. And then I'm just gonna sort of like wing it with the developer. I think this is like what I like to see. It's almost like, um, creamy, if you will. So I'm gonna be experimenting with all different types of techniques because I just sort of, like, I want like just natural blonde highlights. I'm not looking for anything like specifically crazy or like pattern oriented or anything like that. So I'm almost gonna be doing like some chunks and some angles and some this and some that. I'm gonna start with this too, cause it's like right around my ear. So when my hair is down, it's gonna be more like around my face. Around your face is brightened. You just appear to be more blonde. So I'm also just teasing a little bit. I know some people are super against this, but it just helps your blonde sort of blend a little bit nicer and uh, not be just such like a hard highlight. This is a massive piece too, but like whatever, I don't care. So I'm really just trying to get it really in there because this is like a super thick piece. And I also don't want to like touch the rest of my blonde because I don't want it to break further. All right, so perfect example of like, if I told you it wasn't going to be nice like they do in the salons, but the only goal here is to just make sure that it doesn't touch other hair. So like, I really don't care what it looks like. So I'm just grabbing random pieces here. Probably I'm scaring some of you because you're just like, ah, but I think it's like, it's going to be fine. So 
So that one was a little risky to do this early because it is like close to the top of my head, but I wanna make sure I'm getting like different lightning levels sort of all over. I'm just also not overly worried. So some people do like the weaving technique. I'm not gonna do all of them like that, but I'm gonna do some of them like that. The other thing I'm doing with my hands is just like making it a little bit less saturated towards the root because then it will appear to be, to be a little bit uh, darker and it'll have more of like a blended technique. This one I'm gonna just like wing and lay down. I'm not gonna put any foil around it because it's so deep underneath my hair that like I'm not too worried about it. The front of your hair is tricky because this hair is also not strong, so it's easily damaged, but on the same side of things, like I want it to be lighter on here because it's around my face, so it's kind of like a lose-lose, but it, you have to do it because it's gonna look stupid if it's all dark around my face and then light everywhere else. Another thing too is once your brush runs out of bleach, that's when I sort of go more towards the root because again, it's gonna be putting less on and it's gonna have more of that faded sort of ombre look. Another technique I like to do is uh, take hair sort of like this, like from top to bottom and do it that way because then it sort of like falls nicely and it looks like a thicker highlight than it really is. It also just like spreads around your head a little bit nicer, I find. So this is a hard highlight too here that I want to get rid of. So I'm just going to tease it a bit. You also can comb it through to make sure that the bleach is everywhere. I kind of probably should have been doing that this whole time, but I have not been. You can also do this like angled technique. So it's like, looks more uneven, kind of like that. You almost create a bit of like a grown out look or it looks like it's just not the same highlight. I'm trying my best not to re-bleach my old bleach. Sometimes there's no getting around it because you just have to make sure that like all the dark is saturated. Okay, so I just took a little ventilation break. It was getting really smelly in my bathroom. And I just sort of continued along, just putting like, you know, like we talked about before, main pieces by the front of my face. I also wanted to show you guys this sort of crown piece that I'm doing back here. I didn't go all the way to my root. I just kind of went like right there because it just sort of looks better when it's not like all right hugging your root at the back, I think. It just looks more natural and like grown out and sun-kissed. So I didn't go right up to my root, but I just did like this part right here, as you can see. So now I'm gonna do the like front front of my hair and sort of like the front pieces and stuff like that. And like, so front pieces right here are so personal, I think. Some people like to do them like really chunky and obvious. Some people like to do them barely there. I don't really know how I feel to be honest. I like when my face looks bright and when I feel like a blonde. So that would tell me to do more like chunkier pieces. But then again, I don't want the like 2001 like two blonde chunks at the front either. You know what, I'm just gonna start doing it and just honestly see what happens. Like it's a really hard thing to navigate. Even hairdressers and people are like, you know, what do you want at the front there? And I'm always like, I don't know, like so hard to tell. So I'm gonna start at the back of the front chunk. That makes no sense, but, and do like sort of a bit of a tease like I've been doing. These ones I'm making sure are a little bit more perfect quote unquote, because they're obviously on the top of my head and mistakes will be obvious. Um, the teasing in my opinion is really important up here too because then you're gonna get that like sort of ombre-ish look. There's other ways to do it, it's just like I'm an amateur so that's just the easiest way for me. And I'm going a little closer to my root underneath because that, I feel like that will sort of like show through and be also a little darker, a little bit more faded really make sure to get the connection part on the top. It's like where your grown out blonde meets with the new hair because you don't want to line. So all I'm going to do now is like right here is just sort of like literally just feather it. There is a, a bit of bleach on my glove. And I just don't want it to be a hard line. Okay, now let's do this front piece. I think I'm just going to go for it. If I hate it, then next time I won't do it as intensely. Okay, so I have like this whole chunk right here and it's like right at the front of my face. Make sure it's really well brushed. So what I'm gonna do with this one is kind of like stagger it, if you will. You'll see what I mean. So see how it's kind of staggered? It's like not straight across. It's obviously like gonna be a super hard line if I leave it like that. So I'm just gonna like feather again like I did before. Like, I think that's gonna be pretty natural looking. And now the front pieces are equally important to make sure that they're really bright on the bottom too, because when you wear your hair up or even just like 
out of your eyes, you're gonna be able to see all of it. And like really oversaturate it too, so you, you know what got on all of the strands. I think that's good, it's ready for a foil. Okay, <laughs> it's not perfect, but at least I can see, that's all I'm worried about. I'm gonna make the other side a little bit thinner, just so they're not these like perfectly measured chunky pieces. What I'm gonna do now is uh, just kind of like randomly pick out hairs from the top of my head still that like I want to make appear that it's lighter, but I'm not gonna like fully highlight it, if that makes sense. So I'm literally just gonna put like a tiny bit of bleach on my gloves and just kind of like do this. So it's not gonna lighten the same way that everything else will, but it's just gonna like kind of appear like it's a bit lighter. I mean, I'm hoping for that anyway. I really don't know how this is gonna turn out. And obviously I'm not a professional. Like what I'm doing here is not enough to really like saturate it enough to lighten it like a lot but it's just gonna look sun-kissed. Okay, I'm gonna continue around pretty much doing the same exact techniques that I've already showed you guys, just a little bit with my hands, just really touching up just random spots that I think need to be more lightened, but otherwise I think I'm done and then I need to wait 30 minutes. So I'm just going through and watching it lift. Like if you kind of notice that you are starting to get a bit of a hard line, like you can easily just go in and fix it. And like, it doesn't even really need that much of fixing it. You just have to like almost feather on like a tiny bit more uh, where you notice that it's either like yellow or like a hard line and uh, you should be good. So I'm in my waiting period right now, but I'm also just like checking constantly just to sort of watch everything because it's not, everything's not an even foil. So we can't just like trust that it's gonna like lift properly. So I'm taking out my foils a little bit early. To be honest with you, I haven't even like set a timer. I'm just sort of watching how everything's lifting. And now I'm just gonna go back and like make sure that there isn't any like blotchiness on any pieces. So for example, like this one is a little bit blotchy. So I'm just gonna go in and put like a tiny bit more in certain areas. Um, you can also sort of like brush it through to see. Um, it was kind of hard at the top too. And I just brushed it out right there. And then it's sort of like bleach sort of gets on a little bit on like other parts of your hair and it just kind of blends it in a bit more. Like I just kind of did this. But you can see that like, you know, this is starting to lighten up here and we're starting to see some progress. So I'm just gonna continue that process, uh, going through, touching up, putting on bleach, on just like areas that are, are lifting unevenly. And um, just again, like pinching through with my fingers and uh, brushing sort of bleach onto harder lines to make them a little bit softer. Okay, so my foils are out. I've done like all my touch-ups and I think we're pretty much maxed out for lift. So I'm gonna get into the shower, uh, wash all this out, and then we're gonna move on to toner afterwards. Okay, so I washed my hair. This obviously looks horrible right now, but it's because we have to do a toner now. So today I'm gonna be using Wella T11. I've been a loyal T18 user for years, ever since I've had like my platinum blonde, like all this down here, this is T18. But like I mentioned to you guys before, I'm going for more of like a golden sun-kissed sort of natural uh, blonde these days, just to switch it up. So I decided to do T11, which is the lightest beige blonde. So I have my T11 and then you can use like a six or a seven volume. That's my preference but they didn't have any at the store and I already had the 10 at home anyway, so I'm just gonna use 10. 10 is supposed to just be deposit only, meaning it doesn't lift your hair at all, but some people say that it does, I don't know. But regardless, it won't kill me if I if it lifts a little bit, but I don't think 10's gonna do that. So all I'm mixing, I'm gonna start off with half and see if I need the whole thing. So I'm gonna do half of the T11 and then again, sort of just like wing the consistency and see what happens. Okay, I'm starting with this. Can you guys see? Here we go. And mix it up and just sort of uh, see what we're left with. Okay, this is a good consistency right here. It's almost like a jelly sort of feel. And I'm gonna start on the top first because that's what I'm most concerned about. And then I'm gonna go through everywhere else afterwards. I'm also gonna be putting it on my blonde down here because I kind of want to change the whole picture and make it all very consistent. Now that I've like brushed on the important parts, I'm just gonna take my hands and run it through everything else. 
Okay, so this has been on for about 13 minutes. I didn't really time. I sort of looked at the time late. I always just sort of go by look anyway. This looks way darker. It's gonna be lighter when I uh, rinse it out. As you can see, all the, the gross orange brassiness is gone, which is the goal of toner. So I'm gonna jump back into the shower, wash this out, and then we're gonna be able to see sort of what we're left with. So this is the result and I don't hate it. I think it could have gone worse. I'm a little brassy up here. Like it's obviously a little yellow just right up here, but it's not something that I can't fix. So maybe in a couple of days, I'll go back and I'll just grab like these little pieces right here and just like hit them with bleach a little bit longer. But otherwise like under here turned out nicely. Yeah, I think like it could have gone much worse. And ultimately I just was so sick of having that huge root that I I had and I'm not willing to wait another two months which I'm sure that's how long it's gonna be before we're allowed to like go get our hair done and stuff again so uh, I think this is like still a win but yeah I, th I think it could have been worse for sure I want to recap my steps with you guys really quickly just so they're very clear so okay the steps are split your hair into fours you mix your bleach with your developer and your bleach then you apply to your desire start with the back and then move forward if you want just make sure you leave it on for long enough on the top sections because that's exactly what I didn't do and that's why it is a little bit brassy right here and then the back if you can see is like much better just because it got more time then you let it sit always check on it you can add some heat if you want to make it go faster and then afterwards you're gonna wash it out do a treatment then do your toner that's mix your toner with your 10 volume developer or lower then stick your toner everywhere and leave that on for like 10 ish minutes maybe less depending rinse that out and then you're good to go it doesn't take that long but it's just like involved and you need to make sure that you're on top of your time and like all that good stuff and you're mixing. Another thing to note is you kind of want to decide on lightness and color versus damage because I am really strict. I really only like to use a 20 volume developer. I could have used a 30 because it would have lightened more and faster, which is ultimately what happened up here, which is why I didn't go as light as I wanted to. But then on the flip side, that creates the most damage. So it's almost better to do it 20 volume way slower like people have all different opinions on that but I just find I would so much rather be a little bit brassier and have healthier hair than have like ruined damaged hair I always rather do a 20 volume developer and just wait longer and have a slower process versus like a 40 and it go really really quick but then you have a lot of damage so good thing good to decide on what you want to do first before you get started. I sort of touched on this before, but you want to make sure that your bleach is left on for long enough because toner cannot save you. No matter how crazy your toner is, if your hair isn't to the lightness level that it needs to be at, nothing's gonna save you. So that's exactly what happened here. Like this just truly needs to be lighter. Like this part right here, it has to go a couple levels lighter and then you can tone it and take like the orange and the brassiness out. But ultimately you just need to make sure that your bleach has le been left on for a long enough time. The things I did a little bit differently this time are I use a different toner. I've been using Wella T18 for like years and I even bring it to my hairdresser and she uses it for me because I, it's just like I want to use that toner. I know it's perfect. It's a very like ashy cool toner. Um, something more like you'd see d maybe down here but I've been wanting to do more warm golden natural highlights lately so I decided to switch up my toner to T11 which is is more of a warm toner. However, I don't think I would do that next time because I didn't lift my hair to as light as I normally do. So the T18 ashiness would have been sort of the perfect thing to remove that warmth because T11 is warm. And if your hair is already not as light, then you're kind of like just putting warmth back in. So I think that's another contributing factor to why I'm brassy up here. I think the better option would have been lighten less and then use the T18 still more of an ashier toner. And then it would have just taken all that yellow out and been more like pale, but it would have appeared to be warmer because it wouldn't have been as light, if that makes sense. I know it's kind of confusing. The products that I used for this process are as follows. To wash the bleach out the very, very first time, I actually washed it twice because there's just so much bleach and you really want to make sure you get it all out. I first used the Fanola No Orange Shampoo. It smells amazing and it combats orangeness. So I did one of these first, rinsed that out, and then immediately after I washed again with the Fanola No Yellow, just a really combat those orange and yellow tones. After doing a 
thorough, thorough wash and getting everything out. I used a product that I'm honestly in love with. It is my new favorite product. If you have any blonde in your hair whatsoever, this will be a godsend for you. It is also by Fanola and it's the Fiber Fix Bond Connector number two. So this is basically an Olaplex. If you've ever heard of Olaplex, like basically correcting and fixing your bonds, this is sort of their version of that. It is unbelievable. It's uh, In my opinion, it's better than Olaplex. You put it all over your hair. It's supposed to be on towel dried hair, but I was just in the shower. So, so I just squeezed all the water out of my hair, put it everywhere and let it sit for like five minutes and then rinsed it out. And my hair felt like silk. It felt so good. And when I blow dried it, it was beautiful. Like I feel like my hair is brand new. Before I had all these like crazy split ends and my really bleach bleach blonde parts of my hair were so damaged. It repaired it so well. I didn't even think there was anything, any coming back from the split ends that I had. I thought I would just have to cut them off. And this bond corrector did that. So this is not sponsored by Fanola. They gifted me these products, but like I'm just giving you my honest opinion. It's literally my new favorite product. You can't overuse it though because it is so strong. So you're only supposed to use it like one to two times a week. But if you're feeling like your blonde is getting really dry and damaged, that is the best, best product. So then I got out of the shower, put my toner on. Then after, got back into the shower. Then I washed that out again with the Fanola No Yellow, just for good measure. And then instead of a conditioner, I used a treatment. So I used the Fanola NutraCare Restructuring Mask. And I just uh, left that on my hair like a conditioner for about five minutes and then finally rinsed that out. And then when I went to go blow dry my hair, it like, it didn't feel like I had just bleached the crap out of it and spent like hours processing it and stuff. It really did feel healthy. Otherwise, the take takeaways from this guys are, you know, this is not a permanent solution. I wouldn't suggest like starting to do your hair every single time yourself at home. It is kind of messy. It is tiring as well. And it's hard to get to those pieces. Like you can't really see your head the way that like a hairstylist can see your hair. And also like, it's just always better for a professional to do what they do best. But if you're still locked down or if you're just in a space where you cannot go get your hair done and you're like really dying for a refresh, this is an option for you guys for sure and you don't have to do it as intense as I did either like even just take like tiny thin little like feather pieces to start off with if you're scared and uh, start from there and at least it's like something that's anyway that's my recommendation so I hope you guys enjoyed if you want to see me trying new things twice a week please subscribe to my channel and you can follow me on Instagram for more mm -hmm.